it's Valentine's Day, and if you're one of the many new subscribers on this channel, and you're not a bot, um, you probably don't know that Valentine's Day is kind of a tradition on my channel. What I think it was the very first like vlog I ever did on this channel was my trying to read um, dumbest like historical Fabio romance I I could and. I failed that vlog. It was actually the first day um, of the cold snap that was basically an apocalypse here in North Texas. Um, you can watch that video here if you want to, it's really bad. But the second um, time I did a Valentine's Day vlog, I did um, a vlog where I tried to read that book again and I got through it. And I also read The Love Hypothesis to see if it could convince me of love. <laughs> it didn't. And then last year, I did a video right after my short story, well, short nonfiction piece, Pangolin Love, got uh, published. And I read you Pangolin Love while I played the game. So today, so very long <laughs> teaser, but today I'm going to talk about the Steminist novel, kind of your guide to the Steminist universe. Roll that intro. Okay, so pretty much everyone knows about the love hypothesis. That was the first Steminist novel, and of course it was the first one I read. It's called STEM, Steminist because it's like, yay, strong women in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Couldn't be further away. <laughs> <laughs> from my skill set. I am a writer and a teacher, not a scientist, but I did, for the most part, enjoy these books. So I'm going to talk about them in the order I enjoyed them, third being first. So I'm going to talk about the third, and then I'm going to talk about my favorite. So of the three Steminist novellas, the one I least enjoyed was Love Theoretically. Um, I think a lot of people really like this one. It was definitely the smuttiest. And I tried to think to myself, you know, why do I like this stupid stuff? And it's not totally that I just like to laugh at it. And it's not like I'm getting titillated by it. Like, I don't know what it is. It's just, I imagine the author sitting there and I think, what makes them think this is a good idea to write about? I don't know. I'm just kind of like thinking in my head, like, who writes this stuff? So Love Theoretically is about a physicist, theoretical physicist, who works as a, like, a fake girlfriend. And she falls in love with the brother of her fake client, fake girlfriend client. And there was some stuff I really liked about this one. I really liked the main character, Elsie, did not like teaching. I'm kind of right up there with her. Teaching can suck <laughs> a lot of the times. And I liked that she had diabetes and she was paying for insulin without um, insurance to sort of show the rest of the world what it's like for chronically ill Americans, how just friggin' expensive it is when you're really shouldn't be, in my opinion. But um, I really, really loved that. I did not like the science aspect. I don't know much about physics, but I do know that the Big Bang has never been thought to be the origin of the universe. That's just where the math falls apart. Um, apparently we do have evidence of stuff that happened before the Big Bang. I don't know, I'm just going off what someone said, but the big ever expanding, no no one says that was the start. There was already this dense ball, you know? So we don't know what happened before then. A lot of people think it could have been the um, ending of another universe, but all that's to say is that at the very start of the novel, Elsie, the main character, states that it was the start of the universe. A theoretical physicist who studies this stuff. I'm a friggin' English teacher. Even I know that that's not true. So I kind of just was like, mm, through the whole part. And the, char the main character really was my least favorite main character. 
the way Twilight, like she loves Twilight, the way that made out her personality and the fact that she didn't really know who she was. And I kind of identified with her like faking, liking certain things because she was afraid if she changed, people wouldn't love her anymore. Like I get that fear, um, but I don't feel like she ever really tried to change and she was a liar. So Elsie kind of ruined this one for me. I think I gave it three stars, not my cup of tea, and definitely my least favorite Steminist novel. So moving on, my second favorite one is The Love Hypothesis. And I really liked this one. There wasn't a lot of smut in it. There was only one scene and the scene Adam, our main man, puts the main character, Olive, her entire breast <laughs> in his mouth. I'm gonna go back to love theoretically for a second because Olive and Adam appear in it. They have a cameo. And so this kind of goes along with the love hypothesis. Like we don't really know what happens at the end of Adam and Olive. Um, like obviously they get together, it's a fake dating situation. But then when Olive meets Elsie in, or Elsie meets Olive in Love Theoretically, it's essentially just an epilogue where Olive sits in there, tells Elsie what he, she and Adam have been up to, and there's this line where it's talking about how they met, and um, Jack, the male love interest in Love Theoretically, is like, you should sell the film rights, Olive, and I was like, no, I want something sexy like Bridgerton, like a Netflix original, and I was just like, oh my god, what a self-indulgent, crappy... <laughs> Thing to do for an author. So back to lo the love hypothesis. I think there was really nothing like it when it came out at the time and the main problem this one had was that it was just all over the place. Like there were so many scenes that just kind of happened and just very random. It was very random. Um, there was only one smut scene and I did like Adam, the main character. Olive didn't have too much of a personality, but she wasn't annoying, so there's that. And my favorite Steminist novel is, you probably guessed it, Love on the Brain. And it takes place in Texas, so that's good, but um, it's about a NASA scientist, and she's trying to develop helmets that help, um, like, astronauts keep their focus. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but I do like space stuff. Obviously, you can tell by the Big Bang thing I was talking about. And Levi in Love on the Brain, the main male character, was just dreamy. <laughs> if I could meet a Levi in real life, maybe I would believe in love. He was smart. He was very emotionally intelligent and self-aware. Now, B, <laughs> the woman was not <laughs> emotionally intelligent and self-aware. She was very weird. She runs a Twitter account called What Would Marie Do? She's very obsessed with Marie Curie and, you know, more power to her. But what I really, really liked and what made this one stand out is there's not that, like, romance third act fight like, the main character is actually put in serious, life-threatening danger. Um, so that's kind of the third act, everything falls apart. It's not just like a fight between the main characters, which was really refreshing. And um, <laughs> it's a little bit sapphic, and it's pretty smutty. Not as smutty as Love Theoretically, but <laughs> there's a scene in the kitchen that I was not ready for. We'll put it that way. So that's the Steminist novels ranked. I loved them for the most part. And um, if you haven't read any of them, Love on the Brain is my rec recommendation. So there you go, you guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>